Hi, uh, I'm I'm Richie Newell. Um, I uh, am the owner and sole proprietor of Aquaman Complete Aquarium Services. Um, I specialise in uh, freshwater tropical aquariums, installing them, maintaining them, aquascaping them. And for those of you who don't know what aquascaping is, it's basically making a glass box look pretty. Yeah. Um, how I started, um, I've been in the hobby for, oh God, on and off. 20 30 years on and off i forget because i've had breaks and come back and stuff so um yeah so i started as a hobby um i've done various different jobs never found anything i really liked <laughs> until now um, and a chance meeting at my son's school uh, one of the parents spoke to my wife and asked if anybody knew anything about aquariums um she mentioned me uh, i went down and had a look they'd been let down by their maintenance man and they said would i do it and the rest is history so I just advertised and um, basically pushed it and plugged it and it's just me I'm a one-man band apart from my wife she does all the sort of admin stuff and money and banking and accounts and stuff and I have a couple of guys who help me out now and again if the if a job's pretty big but um, my favorite part of the job is the aquascaping part the creative part of it you know making something look good and then having your customer turn around to you and say, oh, that's amazing. That's, you know, I love what you've done. And that's my favorite part of the job. Yeah, so I, I studied here at Pencoid um, when I was 16, when I first left school. I studied for two years. Um, I did uh, MVQ level two in amenity horticulture. Uh, I left, I did day release. So I was in college, I think it was either one or two days a week. And then I was working then on site um, for the other three, four, three, four days, three, four days a week. Um, I left here. I worked with a few landscapers temporarily. Um, didn't really get on with it because I didn't really like, <laughs> I didn't, I did not like getting soaking wet and paid minimum wage. Um, so I went to work for b &Q, um, in Pomprena in Cardiff um, as a, as a uh, garden advisor. So I would basically advise people on what garden equipment and things that they needed. Um, I had various different jobs, loads of different jobs that I, I never really found anything that I liked. Um, and to this point, uh, when I decided for the last 10 years, I've been self-employed. Um, I, I was a taxi driver before this, doing disabled transport for children. And then I had the aquarium stuff as a kind of side business. And then when COVID kicked in, um, the school work, the taxi work dried up um, and I had to kind of push this full time um, or get a real job. So um, I pushed I pushed to this and I'm at this point now. Um, I'm never going to be a millionaire doing this. There's no formal qualifications doing this. Everything I do is purely based on experience. Um, and I seem to have a bit of a artistic eye, I suppose, for creating nice aquariums. We're here today because we were donated this awesome aquarium by Eheim. Those of you who don't know who Eheim are, they've been in the aquarium industry for 70 years. They're like one of the big boys on the scene. Anyway, they donated this and all the equipment and the stand, which isn't here at the minute, um, for today. And what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be scaping a nature-style nature aquarium um, which is based, they call it biotope, um, or biotope inspired, um, which is basically mimicking in a tank as close to nature as the fish, the fish's habitat as you can possibly get. Um, so there are many different styles of aquascaping from Mewagumi, nature style, there's biotope, there's Dutch aquarium, there's, there's loads, there's loads of different types. Um, but today is quite, quite simple, quite straightforward. Um, it's going to be tannin stained water so um, for those of you who don't know what tannin stained water is it basically looks like tea and a lot of people have gone the water looks dirty and actually the, the tannin stained water is really beneficial for the fish plants the flora and fauna that live within the tank because you're creating a really closed it's a closed environment so you're basically managing the fish's habitat um, so what the tannin water does is it's got uh, beneficial acids, tannic and humic acids, which are natural uh, anti 
bacterial and antimicrobial, I think they are, off the top of my head. Um, and basically, it's, it helps to buffer the water as well, keep the pH low, because a lot of the aquarium fish that we keep in the hobby um, are from uh, very acidic waters, so sort of pH of seven and below. Um, so we're just trying to mimic their, as close to their natural habitat as possible, so we get the best out of the fish. Um, you, you generally get the best behaviors, you get best colors, and they, they generally tend to breed more readily if you're copying where they live in the wild. Um, I'll be showing you, like, um, I mean, you, I've got a light on this now, um, but I'll be showing you, like, the equipment that I use, um, the other bits and pieces that I use, like sand, and I've got, like, leaves and pods and stuff like that, and wood and twigs, and there's got, obviously, the tank, the fish we keep are uh, tropical, so they're gonna need a heater. So I'm gonna be adding the heater and telling you, you know, roughly what the temperature is gonna be and um, the filtration system, what it does, why we're putting it on there. Um, the light, as you can see, is already on. It's LED, low power. That's pretty much it. This is a OptiWide glass aquarium with no braces or any other intrusion. So you get the full, like, immersive experience when you sit in front of a tank. Right, okay, so we're gonna start um, escaping the tank now. Um, there are multiple ways to start. Some people start with rock and wood first. Some people start with sand first. Um, but for this particular tank, I'm gonna put sand in first, then the wood, and then some botanicals. And I'll talk to you about those in a second. probably be wondering why I'm brushing the sand to the back. The reason I'm brushing the sand to the back is because the height gives you a perception of depth so it gives you a perception that the tank is deeper than it actually is. So that's a top tip for you. <laughs> and I'm very fussy about the sand at the front. Obviously in nature you wouldn't care, you probably have all sorts of weird and wonderful things but although we're trying to mimic nature this is still a tank that you've got to look at. So for my personal preference I don't like a thick layer of sand at the front. So I'll try and keep that quite thin and bring it towards the back. But that's just me. Obviously your preference might be different to mine. That's quite deep at the back, that's pretty good. That's cool. Right, happy with that. On to wood now. Is what I prepared earlier. <laughs> Always wanted to say that. Can I get it in the tank now? That's the thing. Cheat. Here we go. When all else fails, cheat. Right, so that's the basic design done. Um, I'm going to add some botanicals now, and I can talk to you about those. That is basically like a giant box of pot puree. <laughs> and for those of you too young to know what pot puree is, ask your mum or your nan. Basically, these are dried um, alder cones, which you find on the alder tree. Um, so any of you studying horticulture, you guys will know about these. These are just dry oak leaves. Um, got some magnolia leaves. Um, there's probably some other various bits and pieces in here as well but I'm not going through the whole box um, I've already pre-soaked them so they sink because obviously wood um, this will have to be weighted down because at the minute it's too dry so it'll it, when I try to put water in here it will try to float so um, when I get this tank to its final home um, I will probably have to weight this down um, either at the top here or 
into a couple of little stones dotted around the place just to um, stop this thing from floating because it'll look really stupid if it does. Um, oh, in this bucket here, it's basically just this pre-soaked pre leaves which I'll drop in to mimic the bottom of a Amazon River. So hopefully make your fishies feel nice at home and um, they'll do wonderful things that look beautiful for you. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's it, pretty much. Um, the next, when we get over, when we get over to the final place for this tank, we're gonna install the equipment. So I'll just go over what the equipment is, why we use it, what it's for. As you guys can see, this is the light. Um, it's basically an LED light bar um, to mimic daylight basically um, this is wi-fi controllable so you can you can hook it up to like a module and you can control it with your phone and stuff to make it ramp up and ramp down and change the lighting period and stuff but for this application we don't need it so we've basically just got light power pack job done um, at home i would run it on a timer so you can um, you can keep track of you know when the light comes on when the light goes off how long it's on for um, for your fish and your plants if you keep any no plants going in this tank because in black water which we're trying to create here um, plants generally don't survive because there's not enough water penetrates so you generally tend to have water uh, plants that float on the surface of the water um, they're gonna need a heater which is this um, it's th the basically the it's an electronic heater thermostatically controlled and it's usually comes preset uh, which is usually preset for the majority of tropical fish because they come from warmer water um, some places in the Amazon get up to like 33 34 degrees which is quite extreme for a lot of aquatic life ours are around sort of anywhere between 24 and 26 degrees centigrade don't ask me what that is in Fahrenheit because I don't know and that's what this thing will do so this will just be sucked onto the glass um, there's a little red light on the front there which tells you when it's heating when it's not on it's just it's not heating basically that's that is that's not wi-fi controlled you just plug it in the wall turn it on <laughs> nothing really much to say about that um and then this beast which is the filter and this is probably the most important part of your any aquarium so it doesn't matter whether you run in a marine, um, freshwater tropical, freshwater cold water. This is the most important. This is like your life support for your fish. Because basically what happens is your fish, they pee and poo in the water. That needs to be taken away to be cleaned. Um, so what happens is there's two pipes that attach to this. There's an inlet and an outlet pipe. The inlet pipe draws water in. The outlet pipe spits water back into the tank. Um, there's a pump on this inside the head which forces the water back um, it's operated um, under siphon so if you guys don't know what a siphon is it's basically waters under gravity so you get the water started and as it drops down via gravity into the filter there's a pump within inside the filter then which pumps the water back into the tank and Long story short, there's beneficial bacteria that live inside this filter that break down the harmful waste. Um, fish produce ammonia. Um, the bacteria then convert that ammonia, convert that ammonia to nitrite, and then eventually nitrate. And then the whole process just carries on continually. You still need to do water changes on a tank um, because they're in a closed system. If you can imagine in the wild, you'll have rainfall, you'll have um, Tide, if it's uh, in the tidal area, you'll have tide. You'll have tidal area washing in, washing out. So it washes nutrients in and washes, and takes nasties away. So um, basically, it's down to us to manage this closed system. But without one of these, your fish will die. Basically, long story short. But this is also Wi-Fi controllable, so you can change the flow and whatnot. Um, I probably won't be using that to be honest. Um, and that is pretty much it as far as general decor i've covered the equipment we use it's all low energy low wattage 
so the power consumption is quite low um, good old modern technology okay so um, with the tank set up some of you all think why have we just chucked some sticks in a glass box um, well the, the fish that we're actually going to be stocking in this tank uh, will, will be the cardinal tetra uh, the cardinal tetra comes from south america it's widely found up and down the amazon river it's, it's found in black water it's found in clear water um, and we're mimicking the black water uh, habitat in this tank um, so there's it's very simple quite cheap to do um, these branches and stuff here um, this is just dry beach and that is dried heather um, it's just basically being dried and washed um, so to make sure there's no nasties on it um, and it was picked up when I was walking the dog basically so yeah the, the, the aquarium hobby doesn't have to be expensive so don't don't believe don't believe the hype <laughs> um, so yeah that's that is why um, the botanicals are there as well because the fish like to rummage around in the botanicals they like to um, pick and eat the sort of the microfauna that lives on them and the uh, biofilm and stuff that grows on them um, when this tank as this tank matures um, you might see all sorts of weird and wonderful little bugs like swimming around in there and people are like where the heck did they come from um well the fact i i still don't know basically they just inhabit these they come from somewhere and they inhabit it it's like algae people go well, where does algae come from well the algae spores are in the water all the time you just got to give them the right uh, conditions to thrive and bloom i guess which is another um another topic altogether um so i will get mature media which is from a already established filter system to put into the system so we can have fish in straight away and normally you'd have to wait you'd have to wait around four weeks to six weeks um, for the tank to fully cycle um, which basically means it's safe for fish to live in and um, and then you could add your fish but obviously with the way things are now and we've got access to mature media and different things we can have fishing straight away the next stage will be when we're over the other side filling and then i'll be adding the botanicals and hooking up all the equipment i wanted to touch on project piaba which are a non-profit organization which basically promotes wild caught fish and the sustainability of buying a wild caught fish and kind of dis dismissing uh, some of the myths around wild caught fish and basically people thinking that um, they just go out and they you know hammer the countryside and they just steal all the fish out of the river and decimate rivers it's not like that because these because these villages around up and down the amazon they rely on the ornamental fish for their living for their welfare um, and, their, and providing for their families so basically by people like myself and you guys in shops buying wild fish um what that does is it saves them from illegal logging and illegal like oil and palm oil and stuff like that and basically decimating the rainforest um, if you google project pr but you'll see there's many videos online and the villagers even actually have a, a festival all dedicated to the cardinal tetra which is why this tank I feel should be dedicated to that specific fish the fish are only they're only collected at certain times of the year so often it's when the fish are going to die anyway so during the dry season what happens is lots of the sort of little tributaries and little streams and stuff which they live in that enter the main amazon river uh, during the dry season they tend to dry, dry up so they get caught in these little pools so the fishermen come along they scoop them out they get shipped all over the world for us guys to, to buy uh, other they would otherwise have perished they would have died anyway so i just wanted to dis, uh, dispel that myth that buying wild caught fish is sort of decimating the countryside and the and, and wildlife it, it it actually isn't as long as it's bought from a sustainable source that is um actually 
there's been some studies to prove that farm caught farm raised fish are far more harmful to the environment than wild caught fish because of the amount of fish meal and all that kind of stuff that they've got to use in order to feed the fish in captivity so yeah i just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about that and um hopefully you get something out of it and you like what what we do at the end well what it looks like when it's finished Um, we're about to, all the equipment is installed now. Um, filters on, heaters in, light is on as you can see. And we're about, we're about to fill. I've zip tied these branches together just so it makes it denser so it doesn't try and float off. I probably will have to anchor these at some point with an additional stone. But this stone here is for dispersion of the water. So when I turn the taps on, it doesn't just like throw sand everywhere. So um, yeah, that's what that's what that's what that's all. Now the next stage I forgot to mention um, before you put tap water in. Um, tap water contains chlorine and chloramine and other bits and pieces, basically to make it safe for humans to drink. But chlorine and chloramine is toxic to fish, so we use a tap safe. There's loads of different ones on the market. This is just one they have here. Um, it just helps to get rid and detoxify the chlorines and chloramines, just to make it safe to put the fish. Right now, everything's installed. Wood didn't float, which is brilliant. Filters run in, heaters on, no leaks. So now it's time to add the botanicals. So if you look at the tank now, it doesn't really, it just looks like, you know, it looks all right. It's got a glass box with some nice twigs and stuff in, but where we put the botanicals in, that really changes the look of the tank. Um, I'll probably add some additional uh, dry botanicals, which will float around until they decide to sink. Um, which will add an extra bit of tan into the water. Um, so yeah, I'll just put those in there. I just let the filter do the work and push them around and uh, with a little bit of help from myself, of course. But basically is to mimic where bits have fallen to the bottom of the river. So you'll get some biofilm on this and some so the fish will fish will eat it and stuff. I wanna push it down there where it's empty. probably put put the water from these in as well because um, it'll help to add a bit more tint to the water um, these botanicals came from my friends over at Blackwater UK and also my friend Nick over at Hetton Aquatics as well got to give them guys a shout out because <laughs> they supplied these to me for this project so I'm just going to strategically place this leaf to try and cover <laughs> that stone because I don't like it. 
<laughs> just there to serve a purpose, nothing else. And of course, this tank will totally transform once the water changes. I don't want to take it up too high, but. Right, as you can see, it's taking on a little bit of a yellowy tinge now, but that'll get much darker when I drop some more botanicals in. No real strategic placement, just put them in, swish them around. Now these will degrade over time and they will need replacing, but um, you could either use, there's Indian almond leaves which you can buy online or from your local fish store. Um, there's also more of these oak and uh, I think this is beech. Oh no, it's one of the pods. I'm not quite sure what pod that is. Um, but you've got to get them from an area that is not going to contain any pesticides or near a road that's going to have any contaminants on them. These have all been collected from um, a source where they're free of anything like that. And um, Nick has assured me that uh, he's dried them and looked after them. And so, yeah, we shouldn't have any problem with the fish. Right, okay, I'm just gonna add some additional um, aldercones just to get a nice tint on this on this water. So we'll take, take it a nice dark tea color. Um, and then when, when it, as this tank develops over time, you can add more of these um, cones to add more tint back in. The other thing you can use is what they call a Rui Boss tea bag. Um, you can buy them from Tesco's as long as they're not mixed with any anything else. Um, and you can use them in your filter if you want to stash them in your tank somewhere so you can't see tea bags floating around the place. <laughs> you can use them to add tint as well. Um, and they'll all give off tannic and humic acids just float them on the top they'll eventually sink when they feel like it you might be able to give them a helping hand by pushing them down but they'll sink eventually what have we got in there now plop <laughs> probably about 50 or so should be enough what have we got in there already yeah a couple more that'll do it go a nice tea color there we go and that's that that is basically it okay um, now the next stage is to add this product which is called startup um, it's two vials one is called stop ammo which binds ammonia and makes it safe for fish detoxifies it while still feeding the bacteria and then in this vial is the actual bacteria itself there's millions and millions of beneficial bacteria in there and they're actually in a dormant state right now which is why they're packed in glass with argon gas because um, unlike oxygen it keeps them in their state of sleep and as soon as i open this vial pour it in the water they'll wake up and start they want to feed so they'll want to feed on ammonia which is why it's important that you we add fish straight away at this at this stage so it feeds the bacteria that's within these vials um you might notice that they look like yellowy well the reason for that is because the vial is tinted um purposely to stop sunlight um basically killing off any bacteria that's in there um, same with these um, and some people they, they look at the vial and they think oh god you know it's a bit complicated it's really not um, your parents or grandparents will probably remember carvol which is in a very similar package um, and you basically snap the end off turn it upside down snap the other end off and then the liquid comes out and that is literally it it's not difficult at all um, they do have a range coming out in bottles just to make it easier um, because years ago people would say about you'd have to cycle a tank for four weeks upwards um, and that's not the case anymore um, you st people still do it that way um, the fishless cycle which is the preferred method um, years ago they would just literally start up a tank and get a fish and put it in there um, which is frowned upon these days um, because obviously just because the fish is alive it doesn't mean that it's healthy and happy so we don't do that anymore um, it's bad practice but you'll say to me oh well you just said you put this in and then you put the fish in well yeah because this makes the water safe for the fish to start with so um, so yeah technically it is a fish in cycle but we've put the goodies in to basically 
make the water safe for the fish in the first place. So I'll put this in and then I'll go off, I'll go and get some fish. And then the next thing you'll see will be, I'll float the bag, put the fish in, and then the tank is done. Um, this tank will evolve over time. The water will get darker, um, botanicals will rot down and then they'll be replaced. And um, I might see if I can get some floating plants for this as well, which will help to eat up any nitrates which are produced. Um, and that's that done I'll just pour this in there so this will take 12 oils it'll take six of one and six of the other so I just snap off snap off that bit there and then turn it over and out it goes simple as that and the other good thing about this if you're conscious of the environment it's all recyclable. These are glass and this plastic can be recycled. So they've thought about the environment as well, which is good. Right, okay, after floating the bag um, for about 20 minutes, um, I've opened the bag, tipped the wastewater away through this net and I'm just going to release the fish into the water um, we've added some floating plants as well just to um, help the overall aesthetic let's see if they'll come out by themselves here they go 